Hello, and welcome back to the studio. I'm Dr. Wigo, and today we're going to talk about what Apple's been up to this week, and it's a lot. Yeah, they went nuts. So it all started on Monday when Tim Cook tweeted, there's something in the air. And then on Tuesday, they did a press release where they announced the new iPad Air, which is kind of cool. So the new iPad Air starts at $599 for the 11 inch and $799 for the 13 inch, which is about the same as it used to be. Comes in a new color, sky blue, plus purple, starlight, and space gray. It comes standard with 128 gigabytes of storage, plus $100 for 256, plus $300 for 512, plus $500 for a terabyte. Yeah, this stupid Apple tax on their upgrades. Cellular adds $150. They also announced a new Magic Keyboard, which is $269, which is slightly cheaper than the old Magic Keyboard, but now they have like a different Magic Keyboard for every iPad. So if you're shopping, be very careful you get the right keyboard for the iPad you're buying because it's all confusing as heck. The main thing they changed is they upgraded the processor to an M3 with an eight core CPU, nine core GPU. And this is M3, so it picks up the dynamic caching and the hardware accelerated mesh shading and the hardware accelerated ray tracing. So all in all, it's a much more capable machine for about the same price as the one it's replacing. Brian Tong would call it a good Apple. And it has 16 gigabytes of memory, so Apple intelligence, it's ready. Now, they also replaced the iPad 11 inch for $349 which now comes in blue, pink, which looks red to me, yellow and silver. They upgraded it to the A16 chip with 128 gigabytes of starting storage. 256 is another 100, 512 is another 300, cellular is another 150. And the A16 chip means it's not Face ID like the new iPad Air, it's still Touch ID and no Apple intelligence. Although we'll talk about that towards the end. This new $350 iPad works with the USB Apple Pencil or the first gen Apple Pencil. If you're one of these people that bought into the Pencil early, still works with this one. But the weird thing about this one is all of the upgrades that Apple has done to all of their devices up and down the line, bumping them all to 16 gigabytes of, of memory so they'll work with Apple Intelligence. Well, this one doesn't do Apple Intelligence. So why? I guess it was for the $350, because I guess they couldn't do Apple intelligence and put in a processor and everything that would handle that and keep it at $350, but still a bit of a puzzlement. But it turns out they weren't done because on Wednesday with another press release, they introduced a new MacBook Air. So there was still something in the air. This is an amazing upgrade. It's got the sky blue, silver, starlight, midnight colors. They've upgraded it to an M4, 10 core, four performance, six efficiency, with a 10 core GPU, although only eight cores on the low, lowest end model. Again, 16 gigabytes of memory, so it'll run Apple Intelligence, plus 24 gig for another 200, plus 32 gig for another 400. 256 gigabyte SSD, plus 200 for 512, plus 400 for one terabyte, plus 800 for two terabytes, the eh, normal Apple stupid storage prices. This one gives you better performance, 18 hour battery life, a 12 megapixel center stage camera with desk view. That's that thing where the camera, built-in camera will follow you around, keep you in the center of the frame, and it will somehow, I, it's like magic, let you shoot stuff on your desk from the camera that's on the screen. I, I, I don't know how it works. Again, 16 gigabytes of memory, so it'll support Apple Intelligence, and it'll support two external 6K monitors with the lid open. The old ones, you had to close the lid to have the two external monitors. But that's not the big news. The big news is all of that, and it's $100 cheaper than the one it's replacing. Well, the 13 inch. The 15 inch is $200 more at $1199, plus all the upgrade prices. In every Apple press release ever, they say that the iPad Air is the best-selling laptop in the world. Well, it's gonna continue to be because again, they've dropped it down back to 999 and it's a much more capable computer. With the Mac Mini at 699, 
And this thing at $9.99, they have now have a really powerful low-end laptop and a really powerful low-end desktop, which are both actually good deals if you don't pay for all the upgrades because their prices on that are insane. Oh, we don't need to go there again. But wait, there's more. They didn't stop there. They also announced a new Mac Studio, which everyone's been waiting for because the Mac Studio has been stuck on the M2 for, well, since the M2 came out. But they didn't just do one, they did two. They did one with an M4 Max for $19.99, but an M3 Ultra for $39.99. M3 Ultra? Why isn't an M4 Ultra? I had a chart a while back when I was showing the processor releases and they've been accelerating, but the M3 Ultra never came out because all the M3s came out at once, which they'd never done before, but there was no Ultra. But then the M4 came out and then the M4 Pro and the M4 Max all before the M3 Ultra. Now everybody says, well, yeah, they're saving the M4 Ultra for the Mac Pro. Apple also in various forums basically said, not every generation is going to have an ultra processor, which is essentially them saying there isn't going to be an M4 Ultra or they're lying, which, you know, you never know with Apple, but there may not be an M4 Ultra. So maybe the next Mac Pro will have an M5 Ultra. I don't know. The M4 Max Mac Studio has a 14 core CPU, 32 core GPU, for a $300 upcharge, you can get a 16 core CPU and 40 core GPU and a 16 core neural engine. But the M3 Ultra version has a 28 core CPU of which, of which 24 cores are performance cores, a 60 core GPU, and for another $1,500, which we're now up to like $5,500, you get a 32 core CPU an 80 core GPU and a 32 core neural engine. The base M4 Max Mac Studio with the 14 core CPU has 36 gigabytes of memory and there's no way to change it. You, that's all you get. If you step up to the 16 core CPU for $300, well, it also adds another $200 because it's also gonna upgrade your memory to 48 gigabytes. So it says it's 300, but it's actually 500. They, they've done this before. And then you can go from there for another $200, you can go to 64 gigabytes of unified memory. And then for another $1,000, you can go to 128 gigabytes of unified memory. And the M4 Max version comes with a 512 gigabyte SSD, plus $200 for a terabyte, $600 for two terabytes, $1,200 for four terabytes, and $2,400 for eight terabytes. That's a lot of money. Again, we've talked about this before. The M3 Ultra version with the 28 core CPU comes with 96 gigabytes of unified memory. And then for $1,600, you can up that to 256 gigabytes. But if you stepped up to the 32 core CPU and 80 core GPU, that comes with 96 gigabytes standard memory. Well, same as the other one. But now you can, for $1,600, go to 256, and for $4,000, go to 512 gigabytes of memory. 512 gigabytes of unified memory. And the M3 Ultra versions come with a one terabyte SSD standard, $400 for two terabytes, $1,000 for four terabytes, $2,200 for eight terabytes. $4,600 for 16 terabytes. Yes, you can get a 16 terabyte hard drive for $4,600 on top of the what you paid for the one terabyte. It's a little pricey. Now the ports are different on the two. The M4 Max version has four Thunderbolt 5 ports on the back, two USB-C on the front, two USB-A's on the back, a 10 gigabyte ethernet on the back, an HDMI, on the back, an SDXC card reader on the front, the headphone jack on the back, and will support four 6K displays via Thunderbolt and daisy chaining and all that kind of stuff. But if you get the M3 Ultra version, that upgrades those two USB-Cs on the front to also be Thunderbolt 5 for six total Thunderbolt 5 ports 
And now you can support eight 6K Pro Display XDRs. That's a lot of monitors. Now, if you go down into the specs, which I will put up on the screen here somewhere, the M4 Max chip has 410 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth, but the M3 Ultra has 819 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth, so way faster. And then you look into the media engines, the M4 Max has a video decode engine and two video encode engines, but the M3 Ultra has two video decode engines and four video encode engines. Well, because the M3 Ultra is two M3 Max chips, so it's picking up the encode engines on both sides. And again, the M4 has two ProRes encode and decode engines. The M3 Ultra has four ProRes encode and decode, and they both have AV1 decode. I said 410 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth on the M4 Max, but if you upgrade to the M4 Max with 16 cores, you get 548 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth. Wow, that's a lot. Let's talk about what all this means. What this means is they finally upgraded the iPad Air to be kind of awesome. So for 600 bucks for the 11 inch, you can get a heck of an iPad for not that much money. This thing should sell like hotcakes. Well, except that everybody already has an iPad. But if you want a new one, yeah, this might be the one to look at. The new iPad, it's like this, it's like the 16e phone. It's like, what? I mean, the no Apple intelligence? Now again, $350. I understand. This is these are for your kids. Your kids don't need Apple intelligence. So they give you a bare bones 11 inch. The new MacBook Air is just astonishing to add all, you know, to improve the processor and the battery and the camera and all this stuff and then lower the price $100. When has Apple ever lowered the price $100 on something? Again, it's the best selling laptop in the world and it's going to continue to be because now for less money, for $100 less, you get more MacBook. So the MacBook Air, amazing. Now let's talk about the Mac Studio. Everybody's been waiting for the Mac Studio. I mean, when the M3 came out, they thought there'd be an M3 Mac Studio. Well, I, I guess there is now, but yeah. It didn't happen. And now that it's happened, this bifurcation where, you know, the $2,000 one is very capable, but the $4,000 one is much more amazing. But of course, both of those are then upgradable. So you can really run the price up you can load up the, the, the M3 Ultra version to like almost $15,000 with the 16 terabyte SSD and the 512 gigabytes of memory and all that stuff. But these Mac Studios are really two different computers because the M4 Max one is for power users. It's for everybody who thinks the Mac Mini isn't quite enough. By the way, the Mac Mini is an amazing little machine. It does have the problem of the too few ports, and this one adds more ports, so maybe the Mac Studio would be a better fit for some people. Also, for people that already have a Mac Studio, it's the exact same size, so you could just drop it in and replace your M1 or M2 Mac Studio with the new M4 Mac Studio and get a huge performance boost for $2,000. Which, that's cheap in Apple world. But the M3 Ultra version is just weird. Again, M3, so it's like one processor back, but it's more powerful than the M4 Max, but they didn't do it. I can kind of understand what they were thinking, because I'm sure they were working on the M3 Ultra chip way back when, plus there's the TSMC stuff because when they dropped all the M3s, they dropped out of that process that they were using for the M3s because the M4 used a different process. It's still a three nanometer, but it's a different three nanometer process. But the M3 Ultra still uses the old one. So they can probably get a better deal from TSMC and it won't interfere with the M4 pipeline because it's using different machines and a different process. So I can kind of see why it might make sense for Apple but does it make sense for us? Well, for most of us, no one needs an M3 Ultra Mac Studio. Who has eight 6K displays they need to attach to their Mac? Well, if, you, if you're that person, 
there, there it is for you for four thousand dollars, or actually probably more like five or six thousand dollars, because you're probably going to upgrade some of the stuff. But in the marketing on their website, and again, they didn't do an event, which is why I don't have any cool footage to be running behind me or over me. So that's why you're just seeing like pictures from the website because that's all I got to work with. But if you go from the website, they're really pushing this for AI because of the 32 core neural engine and then the massive amounts of memory, you get 512 gigabytes of unified memory and they have it on specs on the website where it, you can do LLM models with 8 billion parameters and run them all in memory. The M3 Ultra version of the Mac Studio is Apple saying, hey, NVIDIA, hey, we can do AI too. And I imagine there will be a lot of development of AI stuff going on. So this really super expensive Mac Studio is really for AI people or people who do a lot of video and need you know multiple... They show, you know, eight ProRes things being rendered simultaneously. I mean, the, the use cases are on the website and you look at it and you probably will think, I'm not in those use cases. But then there's also people like me and Marquez Brownlee who like just want the best and the top of the line who, yeah, I'm looking at it. I'm looking at you, M3 Ultra Mac Studio. Because one of the problems I'm having with my Mac Mini, which I have documented in some other videos, I'll link those down below, the ports. I got all these Thunderbolt 5 enclosures and now I'm having to start getting docks and, and hubs to, to add more ports. Well, here's a machine that adds a couple of ports and will support more docks and it'll just be a cleaner setup for a lot more money. Again, $600, $2,000. I'm still looking at it. I'll let you know. So that's what Apple announced this week. All with press releases, no event, no videos, no commercials, none of the stuff they normally do with a launch. This is just kind of like under the radar. Just, you know, duh, 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 here you go. If I were Apple, I would have done an event around the iPad Air and the MacBook Air. Because those, and then they could have thrown in the other ones. But those two are major improvements and no price increase, or in the MacBook Air case, a price decrease. So I would have been singing that from the roof. Hey, I'm not Apple. So coming on the heels of the 16E, which was a bit of a disappointment for a lot of people, it's too expensive. It should have been $499. These new announcements, there's some good values in here. $599 iPad Air, $999 MacBook Air, $1999 Mac Studio. Those are all really good prices for really powerful machines. Oh, one more thing. On Friday, Apple said, well, you know that smart Siri with context sensitivity and all that stuff that we've been advertising and bragging about and everything that was going to come out in iOS 18? That's going to be in 2026 now. We're, it's not working. We can't get it working. I tell you, we've been waiting for this forever and we're going to wait for it forever again. I'm really upset about this. Now, I don't want a bad one, so I mean, I don't want them to release it before it's ready. But come on. We've been waiting forever. App Siri has been stupid forever since it was introduced. And it's going to get smarter someday, but it's going to be next year. It's like we're sending Siri off to college and she's changed majors. I don't know what the heck's going on here. So I'm not happy about that. But that's it for today. I just wanted to cover all the stuff Apple talked about this week. Uh, next week, we'll be getting back to our regularly scheduled... Thunderbolt 5 hub because I got another one of those to unbox and test out and try out because, because again, I have all these enclosures that I've been putting SSDs into and I'm going to be getting more when I take my PC apart. Yeah, there's a video coming about that. Stay tuned for all that. Maybe subscribe. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks for stopping by. See you next time. Bye bye. I'm going to go start looking at more hubs and stuff and I'll get back to you. Thanks for staying to the end. Bye-bye.